Hey everyone, I've been using Zoom broadcast tools for the last few months and it is the biggest improvement to my production setup since I started doing this over 10 years ago. I'm not going to switch my background to my boardroom scene like I usually do because this is not about meeting rooms and I'm not presenting today. I just want to show you how I've been using these tools, what they've done to my productions, and how they've made everything so much easier and so much better. But first, I've seen some confusion about Zoom broadcast and what it is, so let me clear it up. Let's go through what it does who it's for, why it's such a big deal, and how exactly it works. There's two ways to use it, so let's go through it. So let's start with what it does. Well, there's a few different apps that do different things. We'll go through it all. But the main thing that Zoom Broadcast accomplishes is it takes your people from your Zoom meeting and brings them into your broadcast tools. I use OBS. How do I get people from Zoom into OBS? Without Zoom broadcast tools, it was very sloppy. It was very stressful. I did it that way for 10 years. With Zoom Broadcast Tools, it's professional, it's clean, it's, it's the right way to do it. So who's it for? Well, they won an Emmy, so it's for TV people, right? The TV broadcast people are using it. But there's something about it working with, with Zoom Room software. That's what big businesses, enterprise have. So it has something to do with, with their rooms. And I'm using it. So who is it for? Well, it's for everyone. Let's take a look at, this is Zoom's broadcasting landscape pyramid. And you'll see at the top, they have the TV media. That's where they, they, where they won their Emmy. In the middle is enterprise production. Let's talk about that for a minute. Enterprise means big business. If a company has you know millions of employees, they'll do town halls, these big streaming broadcasting events to all million employees. It's as big a thing as a TV media event. You don't really think about it, but these big companies they're big broadcasting producers. And Zoom has a tool basically just for them, the custom AV controller. We'll get to that later. And the bottom of the pyramid, the biggest part of the pyramid, is the creator economy. Content creators just like me. Zoom tools is for us as well. So why is this such a big deal? Why did it win an Emmy? At first I thought it won an Emmy just because they're even using it for TV. The fact that it's high enough quality for TV news, for, for remote guests, isn't that Emmy worthy? But that's not what they won the Emmy for. They won the Emmy for these tools, making it so easy. Because without these tools, using Zoom for broadcast, it was, it was rough. Let me take a minute to show you how I've been doing it for the last 10 years. So when I show you Zoom broadcast tools, you could appreciate how good I have it now. So in my streaming setup, I have two monitors. On one monitor, I have Zoom. On the other monitor, I have my streaming software. I happen to use OBS. And I need to get my participants from here into here. So what do I do? It's called screen scraping. I capture this screen and bring it over here, and great, now I have it inside of my streaming software. But there's a few problems with that. First of all, if I want to just display one participant, I need to crop, crop it down to that participant and then stretch out that image to fit the screen. That person just lost so much resolution. They are now a low resolution video image. Yes, I'm saying that for the last 10 years, for a lot of my productions, a lot of the on-screen people were half or quarter of the resolution they should be. And some of my clients complained about it, but there was nothing I can do about it. Worse, what if something happens in Zoom? What if people leave and the windows resize? All of a sudden I could be seeing a quarter of this person's head because their crop, the window got resized. You could see what's going on there. This has happened to me live. Not, not a good feeling. Anything that happens on this screen will show up on stream. If I get an email pop up, a notification, it pops up over the person's face on the stream. Now, of course, I had my best practices. I had my notifications turned off. I wouldn't click on things, but you could see it was a very stressful way to stream. I had to be very careful. Once the stream started, don't touch everything. I'm screen scraping. I don't want to, I don't want anything weird to pop up. With Zoom broadcast, there is no more screen scraping. I get a direct high quality video feed of each individual participant directly in my streaming software. It doesn't matter what's happening on the screen now. People could jump in, jump out. I could minimize it. I'm not getting my video from this screen anymore. I'm not scraping it. I'm getting direct feeds, full quality. So you could see now, looking at this image, why they won the Emmy. If you're a professional broadcaster, if this is gonna be on TV, you could see where they have the, the zoom on the right there, then they have the broadcast tools on the left. They can't use some screen scraping or some sort of gimmick to get it from one to the other. They need a professional broadcast tool. And that's what Zoom Broadcast gives us. So you may be thinking, if the screen scraping is so terrible, and the broadcast people, they didn't do it the same way I did. They had, they had more advanced tricks, but 
It was even worse. Then why have I been using Zoom for the last 10 years? Why didn't I use something that works better with, with OBS? Why were the, the broadcast TV people using Zoom all this time if it was so hard? Well, there's two reasons, and, and it's the same two reasons for me that it is for the, for the broadcast TV people. First of all, the quality. I don't get a lot of bad Zoom calls. Zoom is reliable enough for broadcast TV and high quality enough for broadcast TV. And that means it's good enough for everyone else on the pyramid. And the second reason is for my guests. If I send the guests a Zoom link, they, they join the Zoom meeting. They know how to unmute themselves. Everyone uses Zoom. If I send them something else they never heard of, I got to send an explanation. So we all use Zoom all this time because Zoom is how you see people remotely. That's just, that's just what we use even though it was hard. Now, before I show you how it works, let me just clear up a couple things. A lot of people were thinking that this is a, a streaming tool, like a replacement for OBS or StreamYard, and, and it's not. It just gets your people from your Zoom meeting into your streaming tools. It's not a streaming tool itself. Some people were also asking how this relates to Zoom Production Studio. I understand the confusion, broadcast production, it all seems related. That's a completely different thing. Zoom Production Studio is inside Zoom webinars. If you're doing Zoom webinars, it's a way to make your Zoom webinars look a little more fancy, like a real production, you know, better titles, having uh, people moving around in different ways, but it's all inside Zoom webinars. This has nothing to do with that. This again, it's a way to get your people from Zoom. I'm so happy that I'm able to do this. I'm going to keep saying it. Get your people from inside Zoom into your broadcasting software. And last bit of confusion, one of Zoom's broadcasting tools leverages Zoom's room software, their, their, their conferencing room software that runs in like video bars in, in big company meeting rooms. So some people were wondering if this is some sort of new meeting room tool. Not exactly, we'll get to that in a few minutes. So what are the Zoom broadcast tools? Well, you can see there's a bunch of them. They're all really cool. I love to talk about all of them. I love to do other videos. Uh, Zoom Tiles is, is awesome. Graphics Toolkit is new. I'm really excited about it. But there's two main ways to do what we're talking about here, getting your isolated feeds of your Zoom participants into your broadcasting software. Those two ways are the Zoom ISO app and Zoom Rooms Custom AV. Let's start with the Zoom ISO app. That's the right tool for a producer like me. It's a Mac app, and I'm a Windows person, so I bought a new Mac Mini just to run this one app. It's $500. I need to do another video. The new Mac Mini, is this is the best thing Apple's done since the iPhone. It is so powerful, get the lowest model. It can handle this in its sleep. And if you hang on to the end, I'll explain why it's a Mac only app, why it's not available on Windows, and why it's worth the $500, this one time spend to add this to your streaming production. So here's how it works. I have my main streaming PC right in front of me. I have the Mac mini off to the side connected by network. It's running Zoom ISO. Zoom ISO connects to the Zoom meeting where my guests and participants are. Zoom ISO then gives me a list of the participants. It sees the, the participants' names inside the meeting and lets me assign them to the video feeds. It uses NDI, which is what, which is what we wanted to use. If you know what NDI is, you know. It's a video protocol and it allows video to go across the network with like no latency. It's amazing. It goes from the Mac mini across the network to my streaming software and I see my Zoom guests in there, full quality, no latency. NDI is, is the right way to do this. So in Zoom ISO, I just assign my people by name to each video feed. And then on my streaming PC, I see these video feeds come in as sources and I could do whatever I want with them. It may not sound like a big deal to you, but it, it's like such a big deal. It has changed my life. I'm so happy about the way this works now. First of all, I'm looking at my streams over the last few months and the quality is so much better. All my remote guests are full HD, 1080p, just as if they were sitting next to me in the room. Now, obviously being more proud of my work product is a big deal, but it's so much more fun to produce now. I'm so much more relaxed. I used to really be worried. As soon as I click go live, I'm afraid to touch anything. I'm so afraid I'm going to move something in Zoom and it'll get screen scraped and everyone's going to laugh at me because they see my pop-ups or, or half of someone's head. And it would happen. It was very stressful. And sometimes you need to access things during a stream. You need to open something up. You need to, to, to restart some software. And you can't. You're trapped. Now I'm free. It doesn't matter what happens. I can close Zoom and, and it won't affect the stream. I'm getting my clean NDI feeds from Zoom ISO. Anything can happen. I can, I, can, I can use my computer during a stream. So that's just a quick explanation. I'll have to give you a detailed tutorial, explain how I have the audio routed and everything else, but you get the idea. So now let's talk about a recent addition to Zoom broadcast, Zoom Rooms Custom AV. You people in the middle here have it lucky. You already have this and you probably don't even know it. So for those who don't know, there's really two Zoom apps. There's Zoom meetings uh, that you have on your desktop, on your mobile device, 
and there's something called Zoom Rooms. Now, regular Zoom meetings is designed to run on anything. We know some people have old laptops. It's designed to work on your old laptops. Zoom Rooms is designed to work on certified, pretty powerful, beefy devices, these, these uh, video bars that you see in these meeting rooms. So since Zoom knows that Zoom Rooms is going to run a device that has the power to support it, it gives Zoom Rooms some extra capabilities, like NDI feeds. I was just talking about how Zoom ISO creates these NDI feeds that I love so much. Every Zoom Room creates an N or can create an NDI feed of every participant. Zoom added that a few years ago. They, they know the app had the power to do it, the device had the power to do it. Some of its customers will find ways to use it, so they put it in there for us. Now, a lot of big businesses, enterprises, have tons of Zoom Room licenses. They have all of these Zoom meeting rooms, so they have all of these zoom room apps and they have the potential to to use them for broadcast they have the ndi streams but until recently there wasn't a dedicated app to do it you can go into the zoom room settings and do it but it wasn't it wasn't an easy way to do it now there is a way there's an app called the zoom rooms custom av controller which basically lets you well it does a lot of things but one of the things it lets you do is control the ndi feeds coming out of a zoom room so just as i use zoom iso to assign my ndi feeds for my zoom meeting participants if I have a Zoom room, I can use this app, this custom AV controller, to do the same exact thing. Uh, assign my NDI feeds by the person's name. Look at the person's name in a dropdown, assign them to my feed, and then on my streaming computer, each feed is a person. That part works exactly the same. So yes, what I'm saying is if you're on the broadcast team for one of these companies, you don't have to do what I did. You don't have to go get a Mac and, and use Zoom ISO. You already have this. Just download the free app, the, the custom AV controller, turn on the NDI fees, which are already part of your Zoom room, and you could start doing what, what I've been talking about, bringing in your guests without losing quality, without screen scraping. Now, this custom AV controller has some more capabilities along the same lines, taking things from inside Zoom and taking them to where you can use them. Not only can take the video and push it to NDI, it could take the audio and push it to Dante. If you work with Dante Audio, you're going to be very happy. You can also connect your Zoom to the hardware in the room. So you could set up a little broadcast studio like this, and you could put up the Zoom participants on the confidence monitor for your presenter. Also, many businesses have an auditorium space like this, and you probably already have Zoom rooms in it to bring in remote guests. Zoom for broadcast now lets you use this as a broadcast space with the NDI isolated feeds of all the Zoom participants. And Zoom AV Custom Room Controller acts as a bridge between Zoom and every AV device in this room, every microphone, speaker, monitor, or camera can send or receive the appropriate signals to or from Zoom. Now, if you're using Zoom rooms in a traditional meeting room, you could use the custom AV controller to make it into a hybrid meeting room broadcasting space. And that might make sense in some cases, but I think for the most part, I want to let my meeting rooms focus on being meeting rooms. And I want to set up a real broadcasting space like this for my broadcasts. All of these Zoom broadcast tools are solving the same problem in different ways taking your video and audio that you have in Zoom and bringing it somewhere where you can use it, where you need it. So if you're like me, even if you're a Windows guy, get yourself the Mac Mini, run Zoom ISO on it, and use that to push your NDI feeds into your stream. It's the right, it's the professional way to bring in remote participants to your productions. If you work on the broadcast team at a big company, you don't have to get anything, you already have it. Just configure one of your existing Zoom Room licenses and check out the new custom AV controller. One last thing I have to address, some of you might be thinking, why do I have to get a Mac? Why doesn't Zoom ISO just, just run on Windows? I have an extra laptop. Windows is bad at creating NDI feeds. I tried to get around this. I didn't listen to them. I tried to do it my way. I figured I have a $1,500 laptop. If a $500 Mac Mini can do it, my $1,500 laptop should be able to do it. So I ran Zoom Room on the laptop, which is not really what you're supposed to do. It's not a room. And I used the Zoom AV custom controller and it worked. I was able to, to get NDI feeds. They went through my network and they worked on my streaming software. So I thought I hacked the system and saved myself $500. Instead of running Zoom ISO on a Mac, I'm running Zoom Rooms on my laptop and getting my NDI feeds. The problem is Windows is so bad at creating NDI feeds that this laptop just started heating up. The fans were going crazy. It was hot to the touch. I started getting corrupted frames. The video started looking bad. And that was only doing two NDI streams at 720p. With this Mac Mini, I've tested up to six streams at 1080p, and I think it could even do more, and I don't even hear the fan going. 
for some reason, Macs are just really good at creating NDI. It just, it could do it in its sleep. So bottom line, don't get creative like me, just do it the right way. If you work at a, a big enterprise business and you have access to, to Zoom rooms running on dedicated Zoom rooms devices, which are powerful enough to handle it, then you can use um, Zoom Custom AV Room Controller. Otherwise, do what I did, get the Mac Mini for $500. I'm not using it for anything else. I'm not doing a bunch of Mac stuff on it. It is only running Zoom ISO and it's worth it. It's a $500 investment to finally stream, to finally produce streams the right way. I feel like a professional, finally, and I'm proud of my product. So thank you to Andy and John and the rest of the Zoom broadcast team for giving me what the like like the top thing on my streaming wish list for the last 10 years. And congratulations on the Emmy. Well deserved. Thank you everyone for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and please like and subscribe.